Hello everyone, I'm Lucy Zero Five, and welcome to the Global Match Central Toy Review. And today's toy we're looking at the 2010 release by Hasbro of the GI Joe Pursuit of Cobra Vehicle and Action Figure Review. And today's Vehicle and Action Figure Review we're looking at the Arctic Thread GI Joe Wolfhound Vehicle and Wiped Out. Now I got this straight from a local toy shop near my work area for. Surprisingly enough, for fifty-four ringgit and ninety cents retail price, and still being sold at this price for hundred and nine ringgit and ninety cents. I'm not too sure why that shop is selling it that cheap. I guess it's either a clearance, which other places are not doing it, or a misprint pricing. Either way, I'm lucky enough. Now let's take a look at the front part of the packaging. Now I really love the artwork for the GI Joe Pursuit of Cobra artwork itself, especially on the Wolfhound. Very detailed stuff. Missiles are being launched on the top there, snow being plowed over, a lot of detail being put onto the vehicle itself. Background is very nice, all the fog going on, the snow, mountains, the sun starts to set in. Very nicely done with the colors. And there's the geothermal cobra base. Yes, that's the geothermal cobra base, which is being explained at the back of the packaging. Here you got the figure wiped out. On the side, you got a picture of white out, and on the bottom here, it stated what GI Joe is about and who they're up against, which is Cobra. Top part here, more of the smaller picture of the Wolfhound. You notice this pic this section here has been cut off to show the figure, but you notice here it shows a little bit that the ski torpedo is being launched. Very nice. On the side here, just a little bit of the Wolfhound itself, and at the bottom, the file card. There's a picture of White Out. White Out, name Leonard J. Lee Tree, serial number 999-46-LL27, grade E-6 Sergeant. Mission Equipment, C-102 Impact Resistant Insulated Helmet and Anti-Glare Protective Goggles. Now, at the bottom of the right out is stated, White Out is a cold weather specialist for the G.I. Joe team and experienced in com polar combat mobility. He equips the team with the gear, tools and tactics necessary for a successful mission against the enemy and the elements when the team infiltrates the Cobra Geothermal Base. Very nice. Now, at the back of the packaging, a small little write up on the top stated, Wolfhound vehicle combines the stamina of a tank with the handling of an off-road vehicle. The result is a machine that makes its own road over tough terrain to reach the Cobra Geothermal Base. Rear HT-3X high traction treads cruise over snow and ice as the heavy-duty 1600 GT engine flexes its muscles and growls over impassable ground. The slider missile system launches four anti-armor missiles in quick succession. Speaking of the four anti-armor missiles, this is the four anti-armor missiles now, very nicely done. On the first panel stated, elevating launcher fires four missiles and rotate 360 degrees. Second panel which shows the Ski Velocity X-1 torpedoes, in short form as the Ski torpedoes. And at the bottom is the opening canopy. Here we have the entire vehicle, as stated here, movable windshield wiper which is very nice. At the bottom, free rolling wheels. White out is standing next to it. You got the four missiles laid on the side and the ski pieces on the other side. Very nice diorama going on. Okay, it's done with the packaging. Already babbled long enough. Let's open up this packaging so we can molest the toys. Be right back. And we're back of the room figure and the rest of the stuff out from packaging. Now we'll take a look at the rest of the stuff first before we take a look at the final assembled product of the Wolfhound vehicle. We'll take a look at the instruction manual first. Comes with an instruction manual on how to assemble the Wolfhound vehicle. And on the back here, it shows you where to stick the stickers, which is kind of scary because there's a lot of stickers. Here, it shows you where to load the missiles and where to place the figure. And this is the sheet of stickers, and there's a lot of them. And majority of them are very small, so I suggest that before assembling the vehicle itself, place the stickers first. Now, there are three baggies. One bag contains the missile launcher parts, the missiles and the torpedoes. The second baggie contains the canopy and the cover. The third one would have the threads and the wheels. Now we have the body of the vehicle itself.
Now let's just look at the figure. Now the figure doesn't come with any base stand at all. It doesn't even come with any weapons too. But it does come with two accessories. First, you have the hoodie there, which is not painted at all. Goggles, which is painted, of course. It's made of a clear translucent plastic, and the entire thing is painted in grey. You can actually see through the eyes the moment he wears it, which is very nice. Two of these accessories are from the 25th anniversary snow job figure. Next we'll take a look at the figure's paint job. Now, the dull white that you'll notice here is actually not painted, that's pure plastic, so there's the flesh tone skin there. The rest of the stuff, like the grey paint job, is being applied to the pouches, the belts, the gloves, the boots. Hair is painted of course, so does the eyes. Now, the only thing new on the scope, I presume, would be the head scope and the glove, because I don't recognize all three of this. The head sculpt looks kind of weird. He does bear a little bit resemblance to Forrest Gum for some reason, or at least Tom Hanks with brunette hair. Very interesting. But the paint job on the eyes, one side of the eye is a bit smaller, and he looks kind of weird. It looks like he has problems with his eyes. Now, the body sculpt, besides the gloves of course, is nothing new majority of the body scope. The entire arm, the upper arm and the elbow joint there, not counting the glove, and the torso, the upper torso and the thighs are from the 25th anniversary snow serpent. The lower torso here is from the 25th anniversary, well, snow job. Now the lower legs here and the boots here is from the 25th anniversary Arctic Hiss Tank Driver. So basically the entire figure is that's a nice mixture of the body parts with a little bit of a new body parts as well for the head and the glove. I presume they are new. I could be wrong. Now let's take a look at the figure's articulation. Because of the collar itself, the head cannot pivot up and down. So it can turn 360 degrees. Torso here can turn 360 degrees, move a little bit forward back and a little bit side to side as you can see here. Shoulder joints here can turn 360 degrees and move up this much. Elbow joint here bend this far and turn 360 degrees and bend backwards. The entire glove is a wrist joint that turn 360 degrees. Now the hip joint is hindered by the skirt itself so it can only move this much forward, back and to the sides. Knee joint is double jointed that bend this far and ankle joint bend downward, upward and turn 360 degrees. Overall the figure is alright for a Arctic unit but I really wish they actually paint the figure itself especially on the white color uniform itself because it doesn't match the colors this is a bit more dull and the wolfhound is a bit more well brighter in color so i really wish they do paint this figure it doesn't match the color but it does match a little bit with the arctic scene there it's not bad but it's not that great as well and it doesn't come with any guns it doesn't come with any base stand as well and the body has a really nice mixture of the body parts there so if i'm gonna give a rating out of this i would say i'll just give it a nice 5 out of 10. Yes, 5 out of 10 for White Owl. Now, for the next part, we'll assemble the Wolfhound vehicle and show the final product. Be right back. And we're back after fully assembling the vehicle and applying the stickers onto it. Now let's take a look at the vehicle's paint job. You'll notice the top section of the vehicle, not counting the missile rack, the front wheel of the rims itself and at the back portion of the vehicle, it has this Arctic camo scheme going on. Very nicely done. But they are not painted. This entire thing, plus the rim here, is actually pure plastic material. They mix around with a little bit of grey with the white well, plastic material to create this very sporadic, very inconsistent camo 
well, scheme going on. Very nicely done. It shares a little bit of resemblance to the 2003 of the Spy Troops Snowcat version because that version of the Snowcat has a lot of camo paint job going on but the spots for that camo paint job, the spots are way more bigger. This is more very thin, very thin white wavy lines all over the entire vehicle itself. Spots here, spots there. It makes the vehicle very nicely done with the Arctic camo scheme there. The only paint job for this vehicle are the two back wheels. Yes, the rims. The rims are the only paint job. The entire thing is just pure plastic, which is actually not a bad thing because when you look at it, it looks like it's actually painted, which is not bad. Now, for the mode of the vehicle, despite that this vehicle, the Wolfhound vehicle, is exactly the same, well, same similarity to the 1984 release of the Snowcat vehicle. This mode is not the 1984 mode. This is a 2002 mode that was released on 2003 for the Spy Troop line. As indicated at the back portion here, 2002 Hasbro. Very nicely done. However, the entire body may be 2002 mode. The Miserac is not, which is ironic too. I really did some comparison to the missile racks for the 1984 and the 2003 lineup. The mode is similar to the 2003 lineup because it has this peg for you to plug in the missile launcher that attached to well the sound gimmick box to the back of the vehicle. Yes, this peg is meant for the well sound gimmick. However, for both versions, it doesn't have a slider. The slider meant for launching these missiles and for both versions the missiles are a little bit different but first things first I'm going to show the gimmick the missile rack here can go straight put it upwards and turn 360 degrees on the ratchet of course and to launch the missiles you have to push the slider here to launch the missiles and it's quite tight actually now each of the missiles here, as you can see there are four missiles and they are actually totally different design for the 1984 and the 2003 lineup which I already did the comparison. So very nicely done, there's some updates now. Besides the four missiles, it also comes with the ski torpedoes, very nicely done. Two on each side of the vehicle itself, the torpedoes can actually de be detached. And you notice there are two pegs there for the figure to stand on. Yes, a figure can actually stand on it to make it as a snowboard. Very nicely done. Now you also notice there are pegs on the side and to the back. So there are two pegs for the figure to stand on here. Another peg here. I'm gonna plug this in. two more pegs at the back for more figures to stand on so that's on the other side here and here so this vehicle can actually well carry a lot of figures very nicely done now at the back portion here there's a hook for well towing another vehicle and another funny thing about this is you can actually pull this out to store more well, accessories at the back of the vehicle very nicely done Before I go on to the middle section here, let's go to the front part of the vehicle. you notice the spotlight on the top, headlights, and the canopy is made of a well, grey translucent plastic, or dark grey at least. So it's very nicely done. The windshield here, windshield wiper actually move up and down. you notice the windshield here, this section is more clearer and the rest of, us, of the canopy itself is very, well, fuzzy. They are trying to simulate the snow-covered windshield. Problem is, it's not really well done. They should have painted this section, just like the ice cutter, leaving this clear. So the effect of, well, the illusion of having snow-covered windshield looks way more better. But this is still okay. Now, to open up the canopy, you have to slide it in and then pull the entire canopy out. And you'll notice the figure is sitting inside. Now, for wiped out 
due to the skirt problem, he barely able to fit all the way in to the vehicle itself. He has some a bit of room, and his butt is not touching to the seats itself. Now I'm gonna remove the figure out first to show the inside of the vehicle. There's the steering wheel, which also go up and down like so. As the stick and the rest of the mechanical stuff, very nicely done. Two seats to store two more figures in there, very nicely done. Now, because of white out issue, especially his skirt issue, he barely able to sit all the way in. So I tried to push him all the way in as much as possible, but this is as much as it can go. So he'll have to squeeze inside the vehicle itself because his head is actually touching onto the top section of the canopy itself. Now, there's a lot of nice little details for the vehicle itself. You notice there's also some fan filters there. In, and this section here for well, refueling the vehicle. Very nice if you have anything that actually plugs into the hole for, to refuel the vehicle. The missile rack here, at the bottom section here, there's an engine cover for you to open this up to see the engines itself. Very nicely done. A lot of nice little detail stuff a lot of detailed stuff especially on the inside of the well at the bottom of the missile rack now the vehicle actually has two wheels plus two smaller wheels at the bottom section here this tread is well non-movable it actually existed by this two smaller wheels speaking of wheels when it rolls it does not squeak which is a very very good thing very nicely done Overall, I really love this vehicle. Despite it's not using the 1984 mode, but the 2003 mode is still good enough. Plus the fact that they also updated a little bit on the missile rack here. Very nicely done. And the entire thing is loads of fun, especially when it can carry a lot of figures. Good fun. So if I'm gonna give a rating out of this, I would say this is very fun vehicle. Too bad that the canopy here the effect is not really well executed nice nice way to do it but not very well executed i really wish they put more details to it especially on the missile rack as you can see the color here is pure white but the rest of the stuff is different so this is a bad point so i'll give it a 9 out of 10 for the wolfhound vehicle 9 out of 10 so i thank you all for watching this is lucy05 and i'm signing off